Dad gum, it's Tomater. This is my 1976 Dodge Royal Monaco. We've clipped it out in the front to be a 74. I drove all the way to Texas to get a parts car that was a station wagon to get that front clip. Almost got myself shot, but that was another story. This car is one of several here that I have that are movie cars. Not actual movie cars, but ones that I purchased because they look like the originals. And that's part of the fun of doing a movie car tribute is researching what the parts are and researching what it takes to make them look the way that they need to. So in the interest of authenticity, yes, I will be sawzalling a hole in the dash cap of this car to install an 8-track player. If there's any Dallas fans in the house, we've got the Mercury Colony Park station wagon. Want to take this chance to say obviously none of these cars are actual screen used movie cars they would all be what you would consider tributes just ones that i found along the way that show pretty close to screen accurate all right so this is obviously the wayne's world pacer this car was originally white and you can see it's been painted the screen correct blue with the flames. Does not have the licorice dispenser. This car I bought from kind of a private boneyard. Guy had a used car lot. So all those ones that were out back were just the ones that weren't good enough to rehab and put on the lot. And so I don't know anything about it mechanically. It was out of the estate. So it's one that I'd need to probably tinker on a little, see if the engine turns, see if it's got any chance of running. You can tell quarter panels got some rust. I think they could be patched, but if a guy was going to work on this car, really probably would want to look for a better back hatch rather than trying to repair this one. It could be done if a guy absolutely had to, but be time and money ahead to replace it with a better one. At least it's blue interior. Match the exterior. Not bad, missing the door panels unfortunately, but otherwise a lot of what's in there would clean up. Good windshield, that's always a plus, especially on a car like this that is, shall we say, obscure. So here we've got a Chevelle Malibu. This is recognizable as the car from Repo Man. In that movie, it glowed with kind of a fluorescent glowing paint. So I've been researching a little bit what that will take to get that to happen. Don't know if this will be one that I'll get to very soon or not, but it does have a factory original six-cylinder engine in it that turns. So prime fodder for a will it run right here is a 76 olds delta 88 this car is reminiscent of the one that they used in the movie goodwill hunting and so that car in that movie was kind of a ratty beater when they were driving it so this one kind of has a good matching vibe for that i don't think the interior color was an exact match but at least, you know, if he can get paint or interior close, uh, a lot of times, as old as these cars are, that's probably as good as you're going to find within reason without traveling a thousand miles. Right here is a 1973 Oldsmobile Delta 88. This car is notable as 
Sam Raimi, the director. So he had a thing for his first car, which is a Delta 88. He called it the classic. And so he put that car in all of the movies that he directed somewhere. So Spider-Man, it's Peter Parker's dad's car. There's some, some of his movies that had a lot more of a central casting, you know, where the car kind of is the star. So Evil Dead, Army of Darkness... But over over 50 of Sam Raimi's movies have this Oldsmobile Delta 88, so that makes it a very iconic car. This car I bought because the body is good. It is the wrong paint color, so this one really needs to be painted yellow in order to be the correct screen appearance. It does have a yellow interior, so that was a plus for me and this is one that is ready to make the transformation to go all the way to meet its actual screen appearance right here we've got a 73 oldsmobile 88 recognizable as the sam raimi car again army of darkness evil dead this one's kind of got a good weathered down look to it so it's good for some of those more action type movies like that where the car gets beat around and is a little rougher or even destroyed by the end of the movie which obviously not the end goal for this one right here is a 73 ford torino recognizable as the dude's car from the big lebowski this car was pretty nice, but it does have its bad parts, its rough edges. On any movie car, if you can start with something that's the correct paint color, that's always, always a plus. Fortunately, this one being kind of a beater car for the movie uh, doesn't need to be repainted to make it nice just kind of weather it add the patina to it the fake movie car studio patina with brown paint and all that worst part of this car is it is a vinyl top sadly it's another one that's perfect that's got to be stripped off to make the transformation but that's how it goes unlimited technology from the whole universe and we cruise around in this so this is a 1986 Ford LTD Crown Victoria, recognizable as the Men in Black car. This one is actually a true Ford Police Interceptor. Got this one out of Texas. Pretty good as far as rest. Unfortunately, uh, it's had some previous collision damage on this back quarter panel on the passenger side. It's been filled and halfway, half-heartedly straightened once, but really, if a guy could find a NOS quarter panel or even something off of a junkyard car, that would make this a lot better. Always a few details you can check for to verify that it's a true police interceptor. Uh, anecdotal detail is this little plug here where the antenna was. A lot of times there will be some on the roof. This one doesn't particularly. It's got a gray interior. Another anecdotal detail is you can see on the B pillars the holes where they had the divider cage put in. But on to the true details, you can see there is no rear door handle to open that door. No handle, no rod inside, nothing. And move over here to the speedometer. You can see it's marked certified calibration and it is 140 mile an hour speedometer. So those are all details that can that can show 
in addition to things like option stickers. Right here we've got a Rio Speedwagon truck. This car is reminiscent of the Beverly Hillbillies. Obviously their actual screen used one was an Oldsmobile, but this is something very similar of the period and the time. You can see I've collected quite a few things to give it the appearance of the Beverly Hillbillies. I've got a rocking chair and some other things around. So this one has a Buick engine in it, which I don't know really too much about as far as the year or the condition. So haven't really pursued much mechanically on it. Over here we've got not one, but two Mercury Grand Marquis. These are recognizable as Uncle Buck's busted, swaying, smoke-spewing monstrosity. And with a few mechanical and body touches, they can be made to resemble his car. This one here, some kind of a special edition. It's got deluxe interior and the deluxe two-tone paint on it. I've got a four-door parts car out at the farm, so if a guy really wanted a better hood or any other pieces, I believe the other cars had the hood hinges taken off. It sat in the same private boneyard that that AMC Pacer did. I've even collected a bunch of the nasty old wire spoke hubcaps that Uncle Buck's car had. Gotta make them screen correct. And they will be. Here's the 67 Impala four-door hardtop. Obviously the supernatural car. This one is a true Impala, not a Caprice. I bought it from Colorado, but it had originally come out of Wisconsin. So unfortunately, being in Wisconsin like that for a while, the ten worms have been munching on the body just a bit, but nothing that can't be repaired and patched. See, it's missing some parts. It did sit in a junkyard in Colorado. Got a hood for it here. And I do have this four-door post parts car with rusty frame, but a lot of, obviously, the parts that the white hardtop needs. If someone had a little less of a budget, but still wanted a 67 four-door to build as a supernatural car. I do have a couple post cars. This is a 67 Bel Air. Pretty nice car. Uh, needs some repairs. I've set an engine in it, got a title for it. The way that the four-door hardtops have really been bid up, they're commanding pretty big prices now. This 67 post car is a little more affordable, accessible option for somebody still wanting to have the look of the supernatural car without so much expense up front for a body. Right here is the 67 Caprice. This is a four-door hardtop, so it's the correct body. The build on this car would use Impala side trim and Impala dash trim. There's 
few things you have to change over to make it be the correct screen appearance. Actually, the tail lights are different. The rear bumper ends are different because they have uh, the little backup lights in them. And then the Caprice has a ribbed trunk molding, whereas your Impala is a smooth trunk molding. So overall, not a huge amount of stuff that has to be changed. I got this car out of southeast Kansas, and so it's got some body rust. Quarters, trunk floor, the rear of the body where the weather seal goes for the trunk lid. All these cars, it's kind of a thing on these that the windshield there at the bottom below the dash, they'll get rust in them. So you got to take that windshield out and clean that up. The catalog name for the four-door hardtop was the Sport Sedan. And the Impala Sport Sedan, there wasn't just a huge amount of those built. So guys kind of have to look to the Caprice for the opportunity to build because a lot of these cars have been bought up, built up, and they're drying up. This one's a little hard to see in the shed, but this is a Scooby-Doo mystery machine photo booth. This is one that took me about a week to build. I had a student at the time uh, at our church help me do the faces on the windshield there. I've got blocks that you can put in there if you only have a couple people and don't have all five you can put the rest in. This was a really fun project. This was actually a camper that they had demolished the back half of and so really this was about all that was left of it by the time I got it. So we took this nose off the chassis and it's been sitting in here collecting barn dust, but it's something that given the right time and circumstance could be pulled out again and used. Here we've got Ricky's car from Trailer Park Boys. You guys all know the name if you're a fan of the show. I was pretty amazed to find this car. It's a Chrysler Newport four-door hardtop, and it's the correct screen color. It's the correct year. It's got the wide full-length taillights. There were other Newports that had a slightly different kind of upright short small taillight. Found this car out by Dodge City, Kansas. It was on an auction. Figured I'd be able to get the thing bought, but there was a, another guy that showed up and we ran this thing to probably $1,000. And I kind of had the idea, man, this is dumb. <laughs> and so I quit and let him have it. And I also at the time had a, a gray 78 New Yorker which had a lot better body, had a better front bumper for a derby car. And so I approached him after the auction and said, you know, hey, would you rather have a clean New Yorker instead of a rusty Newport? And he said, sure. So I took a few little pieces off of it that some of the other guys needed for their cars, wiring and trim and stuff like that. And I ran out to Western Kansas, made the trade, so this one got to come home. I don't know really anything about the motor. I imagine it probably ran when it was parked, but who knows? A lot of these cars kind of get ratty and people park them. Yeah, you know, it's not like an old pickup where guys will drive them ratty. You know, a car is kind of a bit of a status symbol. So ratty car, even if it runs and drives, sometimes get parked because it's just an old car, what do you do with it? I've got a title for it. I uh, definitely want to do some will it run time and see what it takes to make it, make it into Ricky's car, screen correct. So right here we've got Tomater. Tomater is a 58, 59 Chevrolet half ton. And in keeping with the spirit of the movie, 
He is a very, very rough condition truck. This truck has all the rust, all the dents you can imagine. It's got a broken driver's door that falls off when you open it. This truck is really a pretty good running truck. It's got the Chevy 235.6. I did have some issue with the transmission, so I need to take the cover off and kind of figure out what the issue is with the shift forks and then get it going and working again. This truck I've actually used at the yard. I had a 57 Chrysler that was missing a whole front hub spindle assembly and unloaded and loaded that car back on a trailer with Tomator. So he's earned his keep. He's not going anywhere. Tomator's not alone. We've also got Dusty. Disney cars character in real life. Pretty well optioned van. It's got the windows, the V8, the automatic. So this is one that would be good prime candidate for a will it run also. Right here we've got a Ford Anglia, which is recognizable as the car from Harry Potter. If you go back and look at some of my early, early videos, there's one where I pick an abandoned shop in Newton, Kansas, and found this car, brought it home. So go back, take a look at those. This car, obviously very, very rough, but one that I didn't have a whole lot of time or money invested in getting so it's here it is what it is and it's just sitting waiting as part of the collection right here i've got the mayberry sheriff's cruiser this is a 63 galaxy and it's got the ford 352 engine we've had this car out and running and driving that was about five years ago it's got good motor, good transmission. This car was kind of a dismantled basket case shamble when I bought it. And I've pieced it back together to make it what it is. Still got some things to do to it, obviously, as with any old car. That's a project. Right here we've got a silver blue Dodge Caravan with the wood grain. If you're a fan of Malcolm in the Middle, you'll remember this as their family van. This van is a little earlier production, so it has the small bolt circle hubs with the little bitty 14-inch wheels. The screen correct appearance for this is to have the argent silver wheels with the trim rings, and so I've got another van and that's a bit of a challenge because you've got to update your front spindles and hubs and the back axle assembly. So that's just one thing that needs to happen to bring this van to the screen correct appearance for the Malcolm in the Middle minivan. And if we've got any fans of my big fat Greek wedding in the house, we've got the 71 Cadillac four-door hardtop. This is a super nice original car. The paint would clean up and buff nice on it. It's got a leather interior that's in really pretty nice shape. This car does need the vinyl top replaced. It came out of a guy's collection in Oklahoma, so being stored outside kind of wrecked the top. Fortunately, this is a solid color car so it doesn't bleach out and get all splotchy like the metallic paint jobs do. Chrome and trim on this car is excellent. Just a good, solid, low mileage, original car. Really well preserved as a survivor. Here we've got a 78 Plymouth. This is the small bodied Fury. 
they made a small body Fury and the big body, which they called the Grand Fury, started in 75 for the small body. So this one would be Roscoe P. Coltrane, Dukes of Hazard, squad car. This car has original 440, was a police car, so it's got the certified speedometer, all the goodies, suspension, whatnot. It is actually an original white paint code car. Somebody's repainted it bass boat blue, which needs to come off, and it'll make the transformation to Hazard County Sheriff's Cruiser. nineteen sixty eight Mercury four door recognizable to fans of Hawaii five O. This car obviously a post, so not like completely authentic, but it is a sixty eight four door. And also in order to really replicate the appearance would need to be painted black. This one's missing an engine, so it's just one that I found and had around. Uh, in case I find a four-door hardtop that needs some parts or if I never find one, this one could always be repainted and brought back to have as close to screen appearing look as possible. I've also got a 66 four-door hardtop. This is obviously not the right year, but it is the four-door hardtop with the black paint, so a little bit of a stand in maybe i don't know which of these cars is really the most most accurate probably probably none of them but 68 four-door hard tops are pretty hard to find so they both the ones that i have kind of just a stand-in placeholder for hawaii 5 cars for the dragnet fans we've got a fair lane this one's actually a 66 the screen used Fairlane was a 67, which really other than taillights and grill, there's not a whole lot to distinguish them. This one is a fleet car, so it's got the rubber floors. It's kind of the low, low buck car, which would have been kind of in keeping with a detective car or squad car. Hey, I'm back guys. If you've been watching my videos, you all remember this car. Dodge Royal Monaco. This one I swapped the fenders out on. Uh, purpose of this video is to show all five cars. So since I've already filmed on this one, I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on it. Got a title for it. It was running driving. I'm sure every one of these cars now is going to need a fuel tank. I could upgrade to a poly one instead of a steel that'd probably be better for extended use on a limited use collector car like this um, check back on that other video to see more on this one and I'm gonna walk around and show you the other four cars here's a second car this one has the most accurate correct interior in it. it does have the vinyl tops so you'd have to take those bottom moldings off the seat pillar there fill the holes not a big deal this one's got the correct tail lights I have a rear bumper for it have a fender extension for that other side on a parts car unfortunately this one's had a hole in the windshield so that's gonna need replaced. May need a little patching in the floors. I'd have to check on that. This is probably of all the cars, kind of the worst one, but still fixable, buildable car. 
all of these that I got are white paint coat except for one the one that is gold that you know you need to do a color change on the jams I got that one just because it's rust free car so it still has the royal front clip I do have replacement 74 front clips for all these cars one of them I got out of Maryland one I got off of a two-door parts car and then the other two were black wood grain station wagon parts cars and then another one there's a yellow four-door hardtop parts car that's been flooded that's the fifth front clip this car here I don't think any of these are 440s except the one that I installed a 440 in looks like a 360 there all of these are 76 77 cars see pretty straight car little rust in your lower quarters and your dog legs but not going to be anything structural or frame rod or anything like that right here is uh, another 76 Royal Monaco got this car from out of South Dakota drove a long way to get it guy had it sitting out kind of in a little Mopar boneyard and said yeah the Derby guys are gonna probably come for it in the spring if you don't so I was like all right it's worth saving it's got the vinyl top that'll have to come off but that's all right this one's got the tan interior this one was a brome I guess because it's got the little pillow tufted door panels so those will have to be redone the car originally had a 60 40 split bench seat so i chucked it in the junk put in the right solid back bench out of a 74 fury that i had traded that one off for one of the front clips which sitting there ready to go for this car just another one to make the transformation You can see sitting next to it here is the Wayne's World Pacer. This is my Royal Monaco. I've got another set of front clip parts to put this one together. 360, ran and drove. I bought it 10 years ago from a Derby guy. Uh, this is one that had rust-free body. Interior was correct tan color. Don't really feel crazy about doing a color change it's easier to start with a white car but this one for the condition of the body I thought it was worth doing a build on and as a crank window car not a power window car which all five of these are that I have are crank window so all those little things that make it come out to be the right right car to convert that kind of kind of makes a difference so that's why i chose this one right here we have the flying ford pinto station wagon another star of the blues brothers movie i bought this car running and driving and obviously you can see it's made its way into my shed here and become a bit of a shelf that's the way it goes need to get it pulled out probably do fresh fuel tank fresh brakes and set of tires a little bit of tinkering and it would be a good driving car again if you like seeing this kind of stuff subscribe to the channel and i'm gonna be bringing you a whole lot more The dude abides.